Hello everybody and welcome back to another Marvel Crisis Protocol Character Spotlight. And today we are taking a look at Thanos the Mad Titan himself. Obviously this model is a very, very big model and one of the probably uh, more, you know, uh, centerpiece models that we've looked at in this series a lot of the time we tend to stick to the lower threats with the exception of a couple we have done the hulk and a few others but this is the first of the kind of big bads that we're taking a look at and um yeah i think this could be a lot of fun so we're going to go ahead and go through everything thanos does where he might be good and uh types of synergies and things that he appreciates so starting out with his stack card here he is coming in with 3-3-4 three, three, defensively. He has 8 stamina on his front side, and he does have some changes on his back, so we will be looking at that as well. He's a 6 threat, although usually he's brought as a 7 or 8 threat, but we'll talk more about that when we talk about the Infinity Stones. He is a size 3 and a medium mover. So nothing too, too crazy going on here. Obviously, 8 health is a good amount of health. But he is a 6th threat, so you kind of expect him to have a lot in that regard. His defensive stats are actually probably a little on the lower end for what you would expect at the 6th threat level. Um, but the size 3 and the medium move are relatively standard, uh, especially for a, a model of his kind of size. Uh, most models in his threat class are actually much bigger than size 3, so he's kind of on the smaller end for his threat size. But um, yeah, going into his attacks, Thanos is equipped with two attacks here. He has his basic strike here. This is a range two physical attack. It's going to be throwing six dice and is going to build you power equal to the damage that you deal. And it has a wild throw on it. So before damage is dealt, which is also very, very important. This is before damage. So even if you would daze them from the attack, you are going to get to throw them and you throw them away small. Do note when using this attack though, if you would let's say uh you, because it's an uh, attack that builds you power let's say they only have five health and you got five successes in your attack roll and you were going to deal five damage because the throws before damage is dealt you technically have to throw them first and if they collide with something they've actually only ta already taken the one damage from a collision so you can only actually deal four damage with the attack for the purposes of gaining power uh really really important to note not going to come up too too often where that's kind of the break point but something to keep in mind with how the uh, how the power building will work in terms of timing. Next, you have the Cosmic Blast. This is an energy attack. It's a range 3-5 dice, so that also costs zero power, with an exception. It says when creating the dice pool for this attack, you may spend up to three power. You can add one die to this attack for each power spent this way. So you can make this an eight dice attack for three power, which isn't too bad. That's pretty reasonable. Uh, or 7 dice for, for 2 power, or 6 dice for 1. And it does have a trigger on it as well. It has the Wild Titan's Will. After this attack is resolved, this character pushes the target character away small. The push character gains the slow special condition. So that's really, really nice. You're going to push someone away small, and then you're going to make sure that the fastest way they could come back, for most characters, will be the same distance. So really, really effective in that regard. Um, one important thing to note with this attack, though, is that that is not a may push the target character away small. You have to do it if you roll the wild, so you do have to be somewhat mindful of your own range bands. You don't want to push them out of range if you were trying to attack them twice or something like that. So definitely something you have to keep in mind with the Cosmic Blast attack. We're going to talk about his leadership at the end when we're talking about affiliations and things like that. So for now, we're going to skip over that and talk about some of the other superpowers on his card. The first one here is Cosmic Portal. This is a two-cost active superpower that says choose another character within range four of this character. Place the chosen character within range two of its current position. This superpower can only be used once per turn. So this is really, really, really powerful. Uh, being able to teleport any ally or enemy character that is not himself. Uh, range two of its current position is great. It's a great way to bring some of your slower moving pieces up the board or some of your pieces that maybe don't have the same kind of movement tricks if they've been put out of position. It's also a great way to look at some models on your opponent's team and say, hey, this guy's not scoring a point anymore, or this guy is out of position, or this guy is closer so I can punch him. Lots of really powerful things you can do with a movement ability like this. It's got range four, so it's got a pretty wide area that you can affect models within it. So yeah, really, really powerful ability here for only two power. Of course, it is only once per turn. That is one of the changes they made to Thanos in his most recent update. So definitely keep that in mind, especially if you're playing with the old version of the card. Just acknowledge that that has been changed and probably very much for the health of the game because that ability is kind of ridiculously strong. 
His next superpower here is Death's Decree. This is a reactive ability. It is a two cost, and it says when another allied character within range four of this character targets an enemy character with an attack, this character may use this superpower. If the attacking character is healthy, so note you're talking about your allied character here, it adds two dice to its attack roll. If the attacking character is injured, it adds four dice instead. The superpower can also be only used once per turn. This is also really, really good. Adding two dice is already super strong. Adding four dice is kind of ridiculous. Um, I was playing a game not too long ago where I was able to make someone like Captain America hit like an absolute truck. Uh, yeah, Death's Decree is really, really powerful, especially if you have the power to be doing it regularly. Um, and it only costs two power, so that's really nice. Uh, as specified, it is once per turn, so that is something you have to keep in mind. Uh, you know, if you're if you're planning on making multiple attacks, or if you have someone who has like rapid fire or something like that, it's only going to affect one of your rolls, no matter how much power Thanos has. So you do have to keep that in mind, but still really, really powerful. And you definitely want to prioritize uh, if Thanos has the power, using it on your injured characters to get those extra dice. The one kind of downside to this is, like Cosmic Portal, it cannot affect Thanos himself. So both of these abilities are very much support for the rest of your team, rather than benefits to himself. Uh, because, yeah, he, he will never go above the 6 or 8 dice outside of, you know, other characters or, or effects modifying him. But, um, yeah, on his own card, neither of these will, will help him out. The next superpower on his card is actually a passive power. It is being of a measurable power. When this character would suffer damage from an enemy effect, reduce the amount suffered by one. So right out the gate, we have uh, what I believe is technically the best damage reduction in the game. Um, you don't have to pay anything for it, and it can reduce to zero. It doesn't mention a minimum here. So this is really, really good. This makes it much harder for... Thanos to suffer kind of plink damage. Uh, you know, if he gets thrown, he doesn't take any damage from being thrown because that reduces to zero. Uh, if they're throwing small dice attacks at him, you know, four dicers and things like that, that typically don't tend to do much more than one damage, he's going to be shrugging that off pretty effectively as well. Now, do note that it does specify enemy effect, unlike a lot of those other damage reduction superpowers that you do have to pay power for. So this means things like bleed or objectives that deal damage to you can still hurt Thanos, so you do have to keep that in mind, but very much still an incredibly powerful damage reduction ability. However, that is not the end of being of a measurable power. It also says, additionally, this character may have two Infinity Gems rather than the normally allowed one, and may use the active or reactive superpowers of Infinity Gems without paying the power cost. This is really, really strong. Uh, we talked about this a little bit in the Infinity Gems video we did last week. Uh, and I definitely do recommend checking that out. If you're interested in playing a lot of Thanos, we talk about all of the different gems and the situations where you might want to bring them. So definitely something valuable to give a listen. But we will kind of reiterate some of that in this one as well. Um, but yeah, this is really powerful. I mean, first of all, being allowed two stones is great. I mean, it means you go up to eight threat if you're equipping two of them. But still, really, really powerful to be able to have two of their effects. And then you can use their effects without paying the power cost, which is really, really valuable on some of the super powerful stones like Mind, Space, or Time, where often the biggest limiter to those stones is the fact that they cost two power to use their effects. So really, really relevant, and we'll be talking a little bit about that in a moment. Lastly, he is a gem bearer, and he is allowed to bear any of the stones, but of course, as specified, he can only have two of them at a time, so you can never have the full gauntlet on him. That would be kind of ridiculous. It would also make him a 12 threat, so I don't even think it's very good, but it would be kind of absurd. Um, so definitely something worth acknowledging there, though. And then lastly, he has the immunity to the stun condition, which is certainly very, very nice. Um, he can spend power very, fairly quickly if he wants to, so being immune to stun is, is very, very helpful in that regard. Now, he does change a little bit on his flip side. First of all, he's going to lose that Cosmic Portal superpower, which is rather unfortunate. Uh, it's, as we mentioned, one of the most powerful things on his card, so losing that is not great. The other change is he goes up to 9 health, so he's a little bulkier on the flip side than on the front side. But otherwise, not much changes except his leadership, which I suppose we should probably talk about now. So his leadership is Death's Agenda. It is for the Black Order affiliation, and it says when an enemy character is KO'd, this character's controlling player scores one victory point. 
which is really, really nice for Black Order. They're typically a affiliation that doesn't run very, very many models on the table, especially when you're running a 7 or 8 prep model as your leader in Thanos. So being able to keep up on the scoring by taking out your opponent's models, something that Black Order is also very, very efficient at, is a great thing for them to have just to make sure they don't get completely scored out too early in the game. So very, very valuable. However, when he flips, his leadership does change, and it becomes, during the modified dice step of an attack, if an allied character may, or an allied character may suffer up to three damage. For each damage suffered, it may reroll one of its attack dice. Uh, if an attacking character becomes dazed or KO'd during the attack, the attack immediately ends. So you cannot literally take yourself out to uh, to make your attack stronger, but you can so to start to deal damage to yourself to get some rerolls, which can be situationally useful, although is generally considered much worse than scoring the victory points. So you do want to make sure if you're using this leadership, you want to try to keep Thanos alive as much as possible, partially for that and partially just to keep that Cosmic Portal ability online, which is also really, really powerful. So that is Thanos. There's a lot to go over on his card, so I know this is probably going to be one of the longer character spotlight videos. But um, yeah, he has a lot going on. He has some amazing control abilities between Cosmic Portal and the fact that he has a throw on his basic strike and a push on his Cosmic Blast. So let's talk about some of the... Um, well, first of all, let's talk about his one tactics card. His tactics card is Power of the Cosmos. So Power of the Cosmos is an Area 1 6 dice attack that it says, during his activation, Thanos may spend four power to play this card. Thanos may use the power of the Cosmos attack, the Area 1 6 dice attack, um, once this activation. However, it adds one to the range of this attack for each infinity gem he has to a maximum of Area 5. If, I don't know, maybe someday in the future they decide to make it possible for him to hold more than two gems, it does cap out at Area 5. An enemy character damaged by this attack is automatically pushed away small from this character. So yeah, this is a really interesting attack. Um, area 2 or Area 3 most of the time, depending how many stones you're having. If you're running 2 stones and this is an Area 3 attack, I think it's definitely worth considering, especially if one of those stones is the Reality Stone, which is going to improve your dice odds. Definitely can be an interesting card. Uh, that said, it says you may use the attack once this activation, however, you would still have to take an attack action for it, so keep in mind that this doesn't give you a third attack in your activation, very, very important to, to note, but still, it's a fairly powerful attack if you have that, uh, something like the Reality Stone there to boost it, you can hit a lot of characters and you can push a lot of characters out of position, so there's definitely some value to having this card. Uh, I, I certainly think it's really interesting on some maps like Gamma or Researcher where being able to kind of be like, I'm in the center and nobody else is, is really, really meaningful. Now keep in mind that because this is an area attack, you're most likely going to hit your own models as well, but it only does one damage to them because that's how area attacks work, and it, your, your allied characters are not enemy characters, so they will not be pushed from the attack. So yeah, it can be an interesting card in the right situation. I don't think very many people bring it. For various reasons, part of that just being that Black Order is fairly tight on tactics cards, but it is also unaffiliated, so if you're splashing Thanos, it could be worth considering for some scenarios. Looking at affiliations, Thanos is only a member of the Black Order, of which he is a leader, and Black Order does really appreciate his leadership with models like Corvus really, really benefiting from all of the things he's doing between getting extra dice on his attacks, as well as pulling enemies closer with either the Mind Stone or Cosmic Portal or a combination of both. So typically in Black Order, a lot of people like to run him with the Space and Mind Stones because it's going to give him some mobility, which he doesn't really have on his own kit. I think Space is almost an auto-include in Thanos for most people. Uh, and then the Mind Stone helps you drag other enemies into position for your allies to punch and for Thanos himself to punch them as well. So really, really powerful combination there. He does have a bit of an anti-synergy with Ebony Maw in this regard because Ebony Maw also appreciates both the Mind and Space Stones. So being able to take one of those away from Thanos and give them to Ebony Maw can be very, very valuable. And I have seen argument to run him as a 7 threat model, uh, so only one stone to allow Corvus, Proxima, and Thanos to be a 15 threat team, which is certainly a terrifying 15 threat team. Another stone that people really like with Thanos is the Reality Gem, but unfortunately Corvus definitely needs the Reality Gem to really do all of the things he wants to do, so typically that goes to Corvus in favor of Thanos.
Now, if you do want to run a Mad 8 threat and you do want to have a stone freed up for Ebony Maw, I have also heard people like to run the Time Stone with him on occasion. There are a couple players that I know of who've had some success with it, so definitely it can be worth considering. The, uh, the ability to re-roll all of your dice on those attacks where you have those wild triggers can be really, really nice uh, and just gives him a little bit of extra consistency here and there. So I definitely understand the appeal of the Time Stone on him. I haven't tried it much myself, and I'm not too big of a fan of the Time Stone in general, but I can see where people are coming from, and I definitely encourage experimenting and trying it out for yourself. As far as affiliations go, I think Thanos is a really interesting splash in a lot of affiliations, and a fairly competitive one in a handful of them as well. Um, we'll start with one of the obvious ones. A lot of people really like Thanos in Guardians of the Galaxy, myself included. He is a lot of fun here. Being able to give Thanos winging it tokens, giving him a little bit of extra dice consistency both offensively and defensively is absolutely huge. Really, really appreciates those rerolls that he's getting it from Mr. Star-Lord here. He also is part of a really powerful 15 threat team here. That's just Star-Lord, Beta Ray Bill, and Two Stone Thanos. Typically when you're running him in Guardians, I believe the plan for him is Space and Reality, which is actually usually what he is running when he is splashed. Space Stone, again, just giving him that much needed mobility that he really appreciates. And the Reality Drone, giving him a little bit of extra consistency, making him hit a little bit harder, and making him a little bit harder to take down. This stacks really, really nicely with the Winging It tokens because now you're re-rolling dice with improved odds. If you haven't already rolled a skull, your, your odds of getting a successes out of your re-rolls on attack are now 5 and 8, uh, whereas on defense it goes up to 4 and 8. So still both, both cases really, really valuable. Giving yourself a 50% oh, or greater chance on every die is really, really nice. So yeah, just a really nice combo there with Star-Lord. Um, for the most part, they don't need the Cosmic Portal as much to get themselves up the board. Most of the ones that need to be able to move up the board faster have their own mobility things already going for them, but they certainly appreciate it, and he does add a great control piece to the affiliation, which already again has a couple, but you can kind of stack them up and get really obnoxious with it. So yeah, it's no surprise that he's really, really good under Guardians of the Galaxy. Another place a lot of people have been really enjoying Thanos lately is in Cabal, specifically under Red Skull 3, and again, no surprise as to why. Red Skull 3's leadership is basically the reality stone on a stick, so this gives you a couple interesting options for Thanos. Thanos could run in Red Skull Cabal as an 8 threat, and he can run the space in Mind Stones, which are really, really powerful, giving him a crazy amount of control and still getting some of that dice consistency that you have from the Reality Gem leadership. So that's certainly nice for him. Uh, the other thing you could do is you could run him as a 7 threat, freeing up a little bit extra threats for you without really taking away from the things that he does on his turn. Now do keep in mind that because he's running less stones, his power generation is a little bit worse, so you might not be able to do some of the things you want to do quite as often as you want to do them, especially since you do kind of have to pay for this reality stone, so you're going to have to keep that in mind when using Thanos under this leadership, but it's still a really, really powerful combination, and you can still do some crazy, ridiculous things things with it. Um, again, talking about some really powerful 15 threat lists, Red Skull, Master of the World, Thanos with two stones, and Baron Zemo is a crazy good combination. Zemo, again, giving Thanos those re-rolls, which work really, really well with him. He really appreciates those from uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, so of course he will also appreciate them here. So yeah, really interesting place for him. I think Red Skull 3 is probably the one you would want to run him under if you're running him in Cabal, although I could see an interesting argument for something like Red Skull 1, um, and just run him with a bunch of characters who are able to, to take advantage of that power. Um, he will also be gaining power relatively quickly there, but I don't think it's anything too crazy, so I think Red Skull 3 is kind of the, the leader to go with here. At the end of the day, when it comes to splashing in other places, Thanos is just a very good, generically good model. There are a few places where I personally like him more than others, uh, such as Avengers, actually. I really like the idea of him under Steve 1. I've tried it a few times now, and I've so far been mostly unsuccessful with it, so maybe it's not actually all that good, but I really, really enjoy the ability to reduce the cost of things like Death Decree or Cosmic Portal to be able to use Death Decree more often. Um, I think that can potentially be really, really powerful when I can use Death Decree for one power effectively every round. 
um, really, really nice there. One thing to keep in mind, though, if you are playing him under Steve 1, is that the stones technically count as superpowers. So if you use the space stone, even though he's using it for free, you've already burned the leadership for that uh, for that turn for Thanos. So you're going to have to be somewhat careful with your order of operations with him if you plan on Cosmic Portaling. Uh, and you had to do the space stone first the cosmic portal will unfortunately still cost you two power that said i do like steve there as well for a, a bodyguard for him something to help keep him alive when he starts to get low keep him on that front side keep cosmic portal up as long as you can really really nice little combination there i could also see a strong argument for steve three with him being able to change your dice into uh, wilds to make sure you're getting those throw triggers and those push triggers on his attacks as well really really nice for mr mr thanos there to be run with with steve three i think that's a a solid pick for him as well although personally i do prefer the the steve one version of it more so to kind of recap things here, Thanos at the end of the day is probably one of the best control pieces in the game. He's got wild triggers to do either pushes or throws on all of his attacks, which is really, really nice. He's got Cosmic Portal, which is probably one of the best control abilities in the game for its, you know, cost to impact ratio. Obviously some things like uh, Doctor Strange's Scalpel ability, which is going to give you more distance, is really, really good as well, but it costs double the power. So in that regard, Thanos kind of wins for, for more efficiency in that case. Um, so really, really powerful there. He's also got access to the Mind Stone, which is really, really good for him. And when you want to run him a little bit more fighty, a little bit more in your face, you can run things like the Reality Stone or the Time Stone to include a little bit of extra consistency on his attacks. He doesn't have any mobility on his own card, but the Space Stone makes up for that in a big way. So another really interesting thing there. And you can definitely kind of play around with some models to play with him to see which ones will benefit the most from the sorts of things he is providing. So yeah, he's a really strong model. He splashes it really, really nicely. There's a lot of different affiliations that really appreciate the things that he can bring them. And yeah, just in general, really, really powerful model. There's a reason why he's been very, very relevant in the meta for, for a while now, because he's super strong and he's definitely a force your opponent has to respect on the table. Um, with space and especially when he has the Mind Stone, he can reach pretty far across the table drag one of your models over towards the rest of your team and probably even punch them on the way uh and then the rest of your team can just go in it's it's a really powerful combination that is pretty difficult to play around because unlike something like deception on mystique where where if you're within two of an ally uh you're not affected by it thanos cares not for these things he will pull you in and punch you to death anyways so really really powerful model and definitely something you have to respect on the table if you're interested in seeing a lot of Thanos play and seeing some of the different affiliations and how he interacts with them, we are starting this week a new kind of mini series on the channel. This is going to be running in addition to our regular battle reports, but every Friday for the next 12 weeks, we're going to be doing a Thanos gauntlet is what we're calling it. So the Thanos gauntlet is basically a series of battle reports that are all going to be at either the 15 or 16 threat level, whichever one we were able to make work, where we are going to be taking Thanos as a splash in every single affiliation in the game. We're just going down the list alphabetically and pitting it against the next affiliation in the list, running the same thing with Thanos and, and two other affiliated models, or in the case of Dark Dimension, one other affiliated model. Um, and just kind of playing around with Thanos as a splash in a bunch of different places to see how how powerful he is in some affiliations on that 15 threat. We think there's going to be some kind of clear winners of this. Uh, obviously, Guardians is going to be very very strong, so we're going to be uh, we're going to be playing him there against. I want to say he gets paired up against Emma there, so it's going to be a really interesting one because that's also a very powerful team in the meta. So we're going to see how that goes. But yeah, ones like that, I think Cabal is also going to potentially be really, really interesting. So yeah, there's a lot of a lot of really exciting ones there. We're going to see how those play out. So if you are interested, that is going to be a series starting this Friday at time of upload. And uh, yeah, we're going to we're going to roll with it, see what happens uh, at time of recording this video, we've already recorded a couple episodes of the Thanos Gauntlet series, but um, you know, hopefully by, by the time this goes up, we'll actually be a fair bit into the set, and it's going to be a fun time. We're
we're just going to be throwing a bunch of dice and having some very, very violent quick games because that is one thing Thanos knows how to do is speed up a game. There is nowhere to run. Uh, everyone will die. It's going to be a good time. So if you're interested in seeing an absurd amount of Thanos gameplay, definitely go check out that when it drops on Friday. But as far as this character spotlight is concerned, that is going to do it for this one. Thanos is a really interesting character, and if you do enjoy the types of things that he does, I definitely recommend playing around with him. I will caution people against playing him too, too heavily in your local scene, especially as a splash in some of those more powerful places like Guardians. Um, a lot of people don't enjoy playing against Thanos, so you're going to want to be careful not to just annoy your locals too, too much. Uh, definitely something I've had to be careful of because I really enjoy playing Thanos, but I know a lot of my locals don't enjoy playing against him, so you're going to have to just kind of find that balance of making sure you're able to play the model you enjoy, but not pissing off the people who you play against on a regular basis. That's not a good idea. So... Definitely something to be aware of when playing him is that he can definitely lead to some negative play experiences if you don't know how to play into him or if you just get unlucky. And um, yeah, you're going to have to keep that in mind when playing against uh, playing against locals especially. So don't play him too, too much, but I definitely do recommend if you like the sorts of things that he does and you like really powerful control and support pieces, trying them out, trying some of the different places, some different places and, and models that might work well with him, because he is really, really fun to play, in my opinion. But that's going to be it for my rambling, so I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please do drop a like down below. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. We do character spotlights like these every week, and we have battle reports on the weekends, and then for the next 12 weeks, we're going to have an extra battle report coming out every Friday for the Thanos Gauntlet. So definitely stay tuned for any of that, and if you're a fan of any of that type of content and you're not already subscribed, feel free to jump on in. But I, for this, as far as this character spotlight goes, that's going to be all, so... Thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. And until next time, have a great day. Peace.